Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all. Welcome. I wish you a, a pleasant week. Thank you for being here on time on an early Monday morning. So let's get started with the first puzzle of today. Who knows this? Which tech company recently announced that they will change their name? Yes, that's a good one. Thank you. That was Facebook. Thank you. So they will follow Google's example, Alphabet. Yeah. What will be the focus of this new change? This name change, what will be their focus? Zuckerberg said their focus will be a new technology. What is it with this new uh, name change? Okay, it will be met the metaverse. They will focus on the metaverse. That's the new technology. And he says, we want to be known for building the metaverse. Okay, a few things, reminders about your assignment portfolios. The deadline is 11th of November, right? 11th of November. Please uh, start building your portfolios. Start bringing them all together. You can submit everything as a whole Word document. And then if you want, you can turn it into PDF or you can submit it as a one word document. But please submit one document uh, instead of multiple documents, like combine everything on just one word file. It will be a really long word file. Okay. So what will be in this word file? Number one, job application portfolio. That should be at the top of your portfolio. Uh, job application number two, two creative challenges. Uh, remember 11 creative challenges in your module handbook, you will attach any two of them. Choose two of them, apply them, and attach them. Number three, your lecture evidence. So this lecture evidence includes six paragraphs uh, about these six Monday lectures, Monday morning lectures. About each Monday morning, you'll write a short paragraph. What did you learn from this? And you will choose two exercises from the lectures, any two exercises that you wish. Remember the exercises we do in class here, in the lecture, you will choose just two of them out of all the lectures, okay? But do them properly. So that will be lecture evidence. And then you'll attach seminar evidence. The last part is seminar evidence. There will be eight activities. You'll attach them. Okay. So submission is through Blackboard. And the deadline is 11th of November. Uh, by the end of this week, you will have everything what you need to finish your portfolio. So you can just finish it uh, starting uh, after your seminars this week. I mean, starting this week. So you can just build it up. So you can submit this as a Word or a PDF file, as you wish. Uh, but everything should be in the correct order. If you want, you can put table of contents or executive summary at the start. But it is not necessary. It's optional. So you will start with the job advertisement that you are applying for. This can be an internship, part-time, anything. But choose something that you will be really apply for and then the CV, and then the cover letter, and then your poster. Poster can be either creative CV or a vision board. And then you add two creative challenges, two of them. Okay. There are 11 of them. There are, they are in your module handbook. You'll choose two of them. And then attach the lecture evidence and then seminars. Seminars, you're already building them up, right? You're already, you already have many of them. This week, we will finish the last two seminars as well. So uh, remember, seminar one was 
time management great. Seminar two was personal development plan. Seminar three, top 10 employable skills evidence. You create your own. The fourth one was personal branding canvas. You position yourself for uh, the companies that you are applying for to improve your employability. The fifth one was Gibbs cycle of reflection. You reflect on a critical incident. The sixth one, self-directed learning evidence table. The seventh one, flower exercise. We will do this this week. And the eighth one is an optional table. Uh, there are six options. We will, you will choose just one of them. Okay. We'll talk more of the, or more on this uh, tomorrow and on Thursday in our seminars. But here is your checklist. Uh, make sure that you have all the elements present in your portfolio. So your job advertisement, CV, cover letter, poster, two challenges, two paragraphs on Mondays, lectures, and then two exercises from the lectures, just two. And then these eight seminars, that's it, in the correct order. And you don't need to like tie them to each other. Okay, each part is distinct and separate. So you can just uh, put them all together in just one document and that's it. Yeah, you're done. And I think you, you have already done many of these. Just, it's just a matter of bringing them all together. Yeah, any questions? Is everything clear? Any questions you can always ask right to me, okay? So, yeah, these were some of the feedback previously. This module is like YouTube plays. No, these videos are curated, carefully chosen. Uh, I'm stressed out, What I don't know what I will prepare because it's vague, open-ended, scary. Well, life after graduation is open-ended and scary. So you better design your life, create your life and career sooner rather than later. There is no exam and there is a lot of uncertainty on what counts as the right or perfect coursework. And this freaks me out. Again, there is no one right answer in life. You just have to work, find what works for you and work hard and demonstrate your creativity. And in your evidence, make it really detailed, as detailed as possible. So life is messy. Your life will be messy after graduation. That means like being very flexible, entrepreneurial and creative and meticulous in your work. So should I include an executive summary? Should I do this and that? Uh, do you need references? No, you don't need references. Uh, so these are my answers to this. Use your common sense and judgment Generally, your decision is usually right. Do what is, what feels correct for you. And in, in your actual job, you can't ask everything to your line manager. It is not like acceptable at work. You have to take initiative and act like an entrepreneur. And one of the things about uh, undergrad uh, and university life in the UK and worldwide is there is too much spoon feeding and it, it negatively affects your chances for employability because employers want people who can take initiative, think on themselves, think by themselves. So don't feel the need to um, get confirmation or approval. Just take initiative, do it on your own whenever you can. Okay. So you'll not be losing points from small details. Look at the big picture, show evidence for your uh, hard work. If you can take some risks and be creative, uh, that's perfectly fine. And I encourage that even. So I re have written this when I was really angry with myself. I was procrastinating a lot. So I wrote, who is your number one enemy? Of course you, <laughs> it's an endless struggle. If you want amazing things to happen, you need self-discipline to sharpen your saw 
and you need single-minded focus. Sometimes you will hate that discipline, but you need to show up nevertheless and do the work, whatever is needed. So there is even a book on that. You need to eat that frog in the morning. You know, The frog is the most difficult thing that you are avoiding on a given day. Let's say it is the morning, uh, you have got up, and there is a task that you are avoiding. That's the frog. Do it immediately. Don't think about it. Jump into it in just five seconds. And then your day will be much better. So don't wait for inspiration. Just jump. Do the work. And these are stages of a writing project. You know, this is what happens generally. Let's say this is for all your projects, exams, etc. as well. It applies to uh, deadlines. So there is a deadline. You say, oh, it's, I have a lot of time. I can worry about it much later. And then time is ticking. You panic. The deadline is approaching fast. All the deadlines are coming together. This is tough. How will I sort it out? And then it goes very slowly. At first, you have to work really hard. And you are stuck. You have to learn how to solve problems in your draft or in your project but you need to keep working continue the momentum and then with a lot of coffee and less sleep and a lot of focus you revise revise and submit whatever you uh, do you do it towards the deadline that's what happens in general and in life so the same with writing writing is like climbing a mountain at first, it is very difficult, but you need to continue your journey, nevertheless, just through small steps and make it systematic. Okay, our agenda today is self-making studio. It is more um, about entrepreneurial thinking, really, today. How can you think like an entrepreneur, develop your artistic, uh, but also creative faculties? My main theme today will be this don't trust the system, establish your own system. I have written an article that summarizes this lecture as well. Please click on it and make sure you read it. It includes all the messages that I'm giving you today. Okay. So make sure you access and read it. So you should never trust the system. You should not trust corporations. You should not trust uh, your university. <laughs> I think uh, you should take control of your career. You should take charge of your career. That's my belief. And you, sh you cannot trust your employer either. You, know, like you have to go beyond that. So these are some of the questions or themes of today. It is very important that we question the system and everything in it. Uh, we need to develop our own independence and power. You cannot trust governments. You cannot trust money because there is enormous inflation. And you see energy prices, gas prices, food crisis. There are so many crises and Brexit. So you can never trust these institutions. Therefore, you need to think and act like an entrepreneur. That's why personal finance is very critical. Achieving multiple streams of income is very critical. You need to achieve your financial freedom early in life, this requires making a lot of experimentation, a lot of learning, learn every day, scare yourself, do a lot of experiments, and go out there, act like an entrepreneur. What are the things that you want to bring to life, to the world, fresh, exciting projects? And you need to learn compounding. It is so important to compound yourself your assets, your knowledge, your networks, your career for the long term. Okay, so which documentary spans over 56 years? Which documentary is this? They shoot it every seven years. Unfortunately, the person who was doing this documentary has died this year. Which documentary is this? This is a British documentary. It is world famous. It is one of the highest quality work and one of the most original works ever produced. 
So they interview people every seven years. Do you remember this or do you know this? Which documentary is this? Up, up. So they do it every seven years. So this is 56 up. So they interview these kids every seven years. They started this in 1964 and then they interview them every seven years. And in this one, they are 56 years old. Right? And I find I never do it now, but here I am. Hopefully, I'll reach my half century next year, and and I shall buy. I suppose I have this ridiculous sense of loyalty to it, even though I hate it, and that's just such a contradiction, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to answer those kind of questions. First seven years got extremely quickly. Just I don't think you really notice it. I mean, you still think you're the same. It's when maybe when you pull a muscle, <laughs> that just reminds you that you're getting older. I always liked old people as I was growing up, kind of you know. My ambition as a scientist is to be more famous for doing science than for being in this film, but unfortunately, Michael, it's not going to happen. Michael, there's my old flats where I used to live in. I've lived up there for 28 years. The memories I've got in here. <laughs> it's how a person, any person, how they change. It's not an absolute accurate picture of me, but it's a picture of somebody. I think they have done the um, 63 in 2019. So here is the exercise. I want you to divide your life into seven years, open your notebook, do some notes. Uh, these are the segments, okay? If you draw it as a lifeline or path, maybe now you are here in between, yeah? 21, 22. So the first three segments are almost over, right? But you have more segments coming up. Uh, I want you to imagine about these segments, give a title to each, what were some of the major life events, milestones during these seven years? Who were important? Where were you during these seven years? Just try to uh, make a few notes. Think of places, cities, people who are significant. Write down your major roles, jobs, projects, key institutions, where you're going to school, which city were you in, etc. And at which junction are you currently? Are you at currently? And where will you be heading next in the next seven years and so on? Just make a quick, some quick bullet points, just to reflect longitudinally on your life. And what happens is we underestimate how much we change in seven years or in just a couple of years, you know. You will change so much after seven years right, that you won't even recognize yourself. Think about where you were seven years ago. You were like a completely different person. You were a child. Uh, and now you are an adult and after seven years you will be right into your career somewhere yeah so i want you to imagine like 
wild possibilities and be very flexible in your thinking. And where do you imagine yourself really after seven years? That's also very critical. Because you are the one that will establish that life, you know. So dream big dreams. If you have big dreams, write down specifically. Where do you want to be? Where do you wish to be after seven years? Or afterwards, during these segments, where do you imagine yourself? Write it down in your diary. And then you can go back to this and compare what happened and what will happen. And do this like periodically, just to see where you are. Try to wrap it up in one minute. You can continue at home if you want. Okay, which book narrates the entrepreneurial adventures of the founder of Nike? This is a, one of the greatest books on entrepreneurship, actually. Which book is this? It was on uh, bestsellers list. By the way, I think like you should read these kind of books more than your textbooks. Believe me, like this book is adds more value, I think, I believe, than many of your textbooks. That's my belief. Like if you read this book, you'll learn so much more about business and entrepreneurship. Shudok. Shudok is the name of the book. The next question, who wrote this book? Who is the founder of Nike? 
Do you know this person? He's also the author of the book, of course, Shoe Dog. Phil Knight, Phil Knight. So this is the book, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. And um, I mean, the book, is, the book is like a thriller story. It, there's so much going on. But one of the things that really struck me was like how many challenges he has gone through. Like uh, there are spies, there are espionage, and there, there is like so, there are so many obstacles. He's almost bankrupt and bankrupt again. And like, uh, he rebounds each time, like, which was like so exciting, but also nerve wracking to read. Okay, the next exercise, I want you to choose your seven. Which seven of these principles are the most significant for you? Write them down. Choose your seven, write them down in your notebook. Please wrap it up. Okay. So if you want to be like two percent. You need to go out of your comfort zone because 98% of the world population is in their comfort zone. They are like everybody else. If you want to do something exceptional and outstanding, you need to go beyond that and choose adventure, but also uncertainty. Do something outstanding. Do something different. Don't be like... Uh, people around you do something remarkable like act like an artist act like an entrepreneur and do something remarkable outstanding excellent okay here's the next adventure I want you to save or earn or make 111 pounds each week this is your challenge so give your brain this challenge and I want you to write up possibilities on how to implement this. Starting this Monday until next Monday, you will make 111 pounds more. So you have to either earn it or save it. Okay. How can you do that? So you start today. And the deadline is next Monday, okay? In one week, you have to make 111 pounds, okay? That's your challenge. I give you this challenge today, and you will do it until next Monday morning. Take it seriously, okay? Take it seriously. How can you make it? This is not only about money, by the way. It is much more about 
creativity, entrepreneurial thinking. You know, so you need to give yourself, your brain, a puzzle, a problem, and then generate lots of ideas. So please generate as many ideas as you can, at least 20 ideas. Write them down in your notebook. How can you make this happen? Can you do some part-time Airbnb, Uber, share economy? Can you share some of your skills on the internet? Can you go to, let's say, these freelancing websites, Upwork or Fiverr? Can you do some work there? Can you teach somebody something? Can you use your strengths, talents, skills? Can you do some investments? Or do you do some projects or jigs? Instead of eating out, can you cook at home or other ways to save? But also think about entrepreneurial value creation, bake sales, can you sell online work? Can you, can you make money online? How can you make money online? Do some research about making money online. You can respond to some surveys, right? And man, there are so many ways to make money online. Just do some research and do start doing some of them. I mean, it is doable. Every day, if you make uh, aim to make 20 pounds every day, then like you are done, you know, basically. It will be 140 by next Monday, right? So the more ideas, the better. Please capture your ideas. And of course, the more you learn about these things, when you start doing research about different possibilities to make money online, there is so much out there. Like just start learning and start experimenting with these. And imagine that you do this for the rest of the year and then next year as well. And imagine that you are iterating yourself, getting better and better and better as an investor, as an entrepreneur. If you do this like every week, that's ne like next year, you will be a rich person basically, much better than where you are today. Like it's a mindset really. If you give your brain puzzles, problems like this, and try to solve them rigorously, like every week, then like you'll be in a much better place by next year. So think about that. Okay, I want you to discuss some of your ideas in clusters, two or three. Uh, try to talk to one another and see if you can borrow ideas from each other and uh, teach each other maybe a few ideas. Discuss them.
Okay, here's a question for you. Your question is, your one hour, you are selling one hour of yours, okay? How much is your one hour? What is your rate? Let's say you will work for one hour. What is your hourly rate? Write it down on your notebook. Current, your current hourly rate. What is it? Write it down in your notebook. So write the current one and then write your ideal one. Ideal, let's say next year. Next year at this time, will it be the same? If it will be the same, then you are not learning, you are not progressing. You're, you're like, you need to improve and your goal should be to increase this amount, one hour amount, more and more each month. Like try to increase it a little bit more. How do you do that? You improve your skill set, knowledge, networks, and you create, you learn to create much more value in one hour. How do you do that? You can reach much more people, for example. You uh, start creating your own assets, and the more people reach them, read them, or uh, the more people are inspired by them, then the more value you add as a person. Uh, per time or uh, think of yourself as an entrepreneur as a consultant or mentor you know, what type of rare skills can you use uh, to make a difference add value in just one hour let's say if you have some clients learn how to create more value for them in just one hour build systems build like business systems build your personal system to add more value in less time how can you achieve that if you give this as a puzzle to your brain and generate, keep generating ideas every day, then before you know it, your hourly rate will increase and increase and increase and increase. Perhaps you will start with Fiverr or Upwork, right? Where you do a lot of work, you make very little money at first, right? But after some time, let's say next year, when you have the networks, when you have the experiences, references, when you have those skill sets and practice and experiences, your rate will increase. 
And your goal should be to increase that rate again and again and again and again throughout your career for the long term. So let's say, imagine that your one hour is 200 pounds. Imagine that. You generate, you create so much value that they are ready to pay you 200. Is this possible? Of course it is possible. Many people do it. Why can't you? Like give yourself this problem. I will get to this 200 pounds point in like two years, three years, whatever, or less. Yeah. So give yourself this puzzle and think in these terms, you know, think like an entrepreneur. I will add so much capture and add so much value as an entrepreneur, as an artist, uh, as a mentor, as a consultant that, you know, uh, people will be amazed. Because you add so much value than 200 per hour, this also means your financial independence. You won't be uh, spending all your life in, uh, in a full-time career. You can quit uh, and achieve your financial independence much more early if you think in these terms as an entrepreneur. Like how can you add more value? Remember these two Irish brothers, they established Stripe and now Stripe is $72 billion and it's increasing almost $100 billion. And these are two Irish brothers who wrote like some code, that's it. Stripe is just some code. So it's a, all a matter of value creation, really. How can you create more value? So get out of the rat race, make money work for you work to learn, improve your skill set, and with your salary, buy assets first. Turn some of it into assets, investments. And that income from the assets should be higher than your expenses, and then invest the excessive amount and avoid luxuries. And this means you will be rich in the long term. So if you want to get rich for the long term, you need to have a lot of assets. That's the only way, yeah? And that also means you need to achieve multiple streams of passive income. So think about how you can do that. How can you achieve multiple streams of passive income? Maybe you can uh, create an ebook. Whenever you create an ebook and make a sales, it, whenever it sells each time, like, you get richer and richer without doing anything. You just create the ebook at first. So do something that you're passionate about, excited about. Use this class project for that. Like create something worthwhile. And then you can start selling it. And it will become an asset for you. So every year you need to think strategically about what type of assets I want to create for my future. Right? And uh, next year, by this time, you should have more assets compared to this year. And every year, you should think of ways of adding to your power base, to your assets. The more assets you have, the more valuable assets you have, uh, the richer and more lucky you will get in the long term. And remember, this is a long-term vision. Like You can establish this like in maybe a couple of years, four years, five years, 10 years, think really long term. Which is better now uh, for you? So taking $3 million in cash now or a single magic penny that doubles in value every day for one month. Which one is better? Can I see hands? Who would like to take 3 million in cash? I would take it. <laughs> No, yeah, uh, you take it right away, yeah? But the penny is much more profitable, why? Because this is one penny, right? In day 10, it becomes $5. In day 20, it becomes 5,200. By day 29, it becomes 2.7 million. And by day 31, it becomes 10.7 million. You see, like that's the power 
of exponential thinking. And this applies to your creations on the internet as well. You know, sometimes you think about, let's say, establishing your own blog or YouTube, and then uh, you say, I mean, it'll bring like pennies. Why should I do that? You should do that because you really need to think about the long term. In, let's say, instead of these days, think of these as months. Month one, there will be nothing. You'll make nothing. In the 10th month, you will make $5. And then in the 20th month, when you establish your business systems and you uh, make recurring money, you iterate yourself, you get better and better. Then you start making uh, thousands. And then if you continue iterating, learning up fast, then in a couple of years, uh, let's say month 29, you will become a millionaire. That's how things are. You know, things are non-linear. You need to keep learning, iterating, innovating, and don't give up. This is so important, by the way. Like, if you get the grasp and dynamics of this, this applies to any aspect of your life. Like, if you want to improve the quality of your life, you better understand how this logic works, because without exponential thinking, you can't achieve amazing things. You need to learn how to be nonlinear, exponential. Let's think of three friends, Larry, Scott, Brad. They are similar. Larry keeps doing what he has always done. Scott makes small positive changes every day. Reading 10 pages, cutting some calories, walking extra steps. Brad, Brad makes a few poor de decisions, buys a big TV, it's a bit more dessert and adds one drink per week to his new bar. So at month 10, there are no differences. You can't differentiate. At month 25, there are measurable differences. And at month 31, these differences become stark. Scott loses weight, gets a promotion and race. And every aspect of his life is thriving, he is getting richer. Larry is exactly in the same place, that's why he's bitter. Brad puts on weight, feels sluggish, less confident, less productive, withdrawn, poorer, and unhappy because of these small poor choices. Like you make a small poor choice one day, one day more, one day more in the long term, these are iterating and these will harm you. Uh, in a way that you'll go bankrupt. So we call this the compounding effect, compounding effect. These small choices that you make in your life every day, small choices, they make you really good or really bad. This applies to health, relationships, income, happiness, and success, everything. So small and smart choices every day, do it consistently over a long time, that makes a radical difference. And outstanding, remarkable people know this, you know. In the short run, there is no visible difference, but in the long run, there is a world of difference. And these differences start emerging after month 20, 25, 31. So that means like about three years. If you start now, you can achieve radical differences in about three years. So our choices determine our life paths. What's uncomfortable right now, early on, becomes comfortable later. So if you start saving, investing, producing value, acting like an entrepreneur right now, these are uncomfortable. You'll be like maybe terrorized at first. You will make a lot of mistakes, but for later on, you will learn, achieve so much more. And what's comfortable right now becomes uncomfortable later and leads to failures in the long run. So a few poor choices and everything deteriorates really fast in the long term. Okay, the next puzzle, which documentary narrates the rise of crowdfunding? 
This is the first documentary about crowdfunding. I think it's on Netflix as well. It follows hopes and dreams, fears and pitfalls of independent creators. Which documentary is this? It's the first documentary about crowdfunding. It's on Netflix. You should have seen this, I think. Capital C. It's also on YouTube, uh, I think. Uh, okay. All right. It really gave us the opportunity to launch something that we wouldn't have had before. Traditionally, I'd go to this business guy and be like, hey, business guy, we're going to take off our clothes and run around and act crazy. Do you want to give us money for this thing? And they'd be like, no, you guys are crazy. You get to throw it out there. And if you get accepted, then it's like, oh, we got a company. Oh, okay, what are we going to do now? In crowdfunding, money isn't just money. It's not about the object that you receive. It's about you actually making it happen. What crowdfunding is, it's the cap on the long relationship, where you've spent years creating work that resonates with people and that they can't live without. So they go out on Facebook, and they go on Twitter, and they go blog about it, and they go tell friends. And the end result is that amazing things happen. And then finally, after you've done this, and after they love you, and after you're a part of their life, then you go, hey guys, do you want to help me create my greatest work yet? We have this country is on the brink of understanding. It's the largest paradigm shift since the Industrial Revolution. I think we're going to watch two elections now where even really, really rich people that feel like they can buy elections are going to understand. Taking this organism of the crowd and creating things that could otherwise never be done before. Before we needed companies, we needed a large amount of assets to start up something with a lot of people. Now you can do it yourself. The people have a voice. And that's what democracy was all about. It's almost like we started this revolution by accident. This sort of thing was always bigger than just us. <laughs> capital C. Proud with a capital C. watch it, uh, crowdfunding it might be one of the solutions that will change your life for the better forever. So it helps you to access capital from crowds, from people, investors all around the world. You'll have your loyal patrons who will support you. And you can pre-sell your books or ideas or innovations, inventions. You don't need any money. You can access capital. So if you have a good story to tell, and then you need that social network, you go on to these platforms, crowdfunding platforms, and you establish a reward system. If you support me, then I will give you my new book early on, sign it, whatever. You will have my song first. You will have my access to my exclusive fashion line. Whatever you wish to create, like you share it with your early fans, early fans using this model. Which crowdfunding platform helps bring creative projects to life since 2009? This is the biggest one. Which one is this? You should know this. Which one is the first one that comes to your mind when you say crowdfunding? What's the first website that comes to your mind? By the way, like, why don't you know about these things? Nobody has taught, these are not in your curriculum, right? And that's a gap. I think you, like, you need to know these things. I think, you know, that's my view. I mean, uh, so creative projects, received six billion on this platform. And more than 200,000 projects, films, music, stage shows, comics, journalism, video games, they are all in here. So which one is this? I think you need this, yeah? Kickstarter, Kickstarter. So if you go to kickstarter.com, you will see many projects. Look them, look at them, analyze them, and see where you fit. Can you also establish your own page on Kickstarter? What do you wish to create? Would you like to write a book, create a comic book, let's say, or create a 
documentary, whatever you wish to create, share it with the world and get them excited, inspired about it so that they will support you and put a deadline, perhaps one year, whatever. And if you get the funding, then you bring it into your uh, into life and fulfill your obligations there. That's as simple as that. So you can start your own project using this website. There are different types of crowdfunding. You can Google this and see which one is the best for you. Okay. This guy is an excellent example of this. He said, I will make a potato salad, but he made this movie about it and people loved it. This is the movie for crowdfunding. Oui. And after this movie, he raised $40,000 to make potatoes. Face a paradox when we design, to make the cutting edge familiar, and the familiar cutting edge, and vice versa. But if we can overcome these challenges, we can make a product without compromise. When we set out to make a potato salad, we couldn't say yes to every and there are a thousand no's for every yes. Every ingredient had to have a reason to be there. And we had to ask ourselves, what's important here? Consistency, taste, texture. We set out to redefine what a side dish could be. And together, we're building a movement. Probably. So if you create something fun like this, even if it's a potato salad, people will support you crazily, enormously. So this guy raised 40,000. And then the big problem is what will he do this with this money? Like he has to make potato salad because he promised to do so, which was like great. The next puzzle. Which crowdfunding platform lets people financially support, reward content creators through a monthly subscription? Let's say you are a podcaster or a YouTuber or a writer or a journalist. You want to, yeah, yeah exactly. Well done. This is Patreon. And you can support people, creators with multiple reward systems, yeah? on a monthly basis and you can subscribe to them, which is a great model. Many people, many independent creators are now on Patreon and they earn their salary through Patreon, many of them. And there are other platforms as well. You can have a look at others as well. Indiegogo, GoFundMe, etc. Okay, now here is your adventure. I want you to think about your Kickstarter project. What would you like to bring to the world using Kickstarter or another crowdfunding platform? Please capture your thoughts and ideas. What is your big idea? What do you wish to create? Choose something that will build on your strengths and passions and hobby. And capture your ideas. The more ideas, the better. Make it specific.
and you can establish this as a challenge alongside your study, alongside your full-time work, let's say. You can do this in the evenings or in a weekend. There are like startup marathons, startup weekends. In 54 hours, this is a marathon, you enter that startup weekend, and at the end of that startup weekend, you establish your business. There are models like this. Like they do this everywhere in Norwich, in London, in every city in the world. They do these startup weekends. I recommend you attend one of them just to see how enterprise works, how entrepreneurship works. Just be part of the teams there if you can. The same with your assets, you know. Design yourself an asset creation weekend. Say that I will create a short ebook this weekend. That's it. This will be my first asset. Or I will design my online training program. A very short one. And I will sell it on Skillshare, let's say. Or Thinkific, whatever. Or if you want to make a movie, then go to Kickstarter, describe your movie or documentary, whatever you wish to create. Tell the world about it and get support. And then the good thing about Kickstarter is when you make a promise, you have to do it. Uh, so if your project is supported, then you get the funding and you have to make it happen. And that's good because it uh, keeps you busy, engaged. Because you promised to your supporters, right? They supported you. You made a promise. So you have to deliver on that promise. That means you will have your book or creation or video ready, whatever you wish to create. It will be ready. Here's a puzzle. Which company or website turns famous inventions into art that you can buy? For example, this is a pa patent, an invention. You can order these visuals, visual patents. That's a great business model, by the way. Like, they let you buy prints of these famous pat patents. You can hang them on your wall. Which website is this? And it was like through these crowdfunding websites that they established this. Retro patents. This is the website, retropatents.com. You can see like many inventions of today. Tesla, Airbnb, Tomogotchi, Sony Walkmans. Blackberry, etc. These are from their patent applications. So the visual, these are the visual patent applications. Okay, I also included some uh, other creators who are doing work through crowdfunding. This is a Turkish painter, Elif Karadayı, he's a friend of mine. And Elif Shafak, who is a publisher, novelist. These are some of her novels. Okay, which company takes you to space through a balloon ride? They take you to space for six hours. It's a six hour journey. They go higher than the stratosphere. You go up in a balloon and then come back. And the price is 125,000. Which company is this? Space Perspective. Space Perspective. So you get this balloon ride to, space, uh, to the stratosphere. The most breathtaking six hours of your life. It's an unforgettable spectacle. As you can see, space travel becomes more and more touristic and it will boom in the upcoming years. The, uh, the astronaut experience, yeah? And this is how it works, how uh, 
it goes up two hours and then stays there two hours, I think. And then the total flight time is six hours. Okay, the next exercise, I want you to look at the example list and create your own lists. The first one, I'm good at. What are you good at? What do you love? Make a list. These are some of the things that I created for myself. The more, the better. You can continue doing this at home, but start your list right now. Like, Come up with just maybe three, four, five, six things that you are good at and you love doing. These are the things that I love doing or I'm good at. For example, I'm the more specific, the better, by the way. I love cooking green beans with olive oil, dill, garlic, and tomatoes. That's my special recipe. Yeah. I love doing that, for example. So do you have like a special things that signature things that only you do and you are good at it or you love doing? What are they? Make a list of them. And by the way, the, the longer this list is, the better. Yeah. If you can come up with like a hundred things, by all means, write them all in your notebook. Like make a long list. And if you combine this list with this other challenge, 111 pounds challenge, then you can find like that some of these things which represent your best strengths, you can turn them into money. Like how can you make money from some of these? Think about that. Maybe some of them, especially in the long term, can be your brand. You can establish a brand on Instagram about this, or you can teach people. You can turn it into a YouTube channel or a blog. So think about how you can turn these into some initiatives or entrepreneurial projects or artistic projects. Maybe you can sell some of your creations on Etsy. If you love selling, you can start selling on Amazon. You can try drop shipping. Yeah. There are all these possibilities. Just try them. Okay. The next one, what do you want to learn, improve, get better at? The second list. Again, try to create, make a list of all the things that you want to learn, improve, get better at. For example, I want to learn Chinese, let's say, or I want to get better at graphic recording events that I, that I attend, etc. So these, these, are, these were some of the things that I wanted to do. So what are the things that you want to get better at? Please create your own list. Maybe these are new skills, learning a new language, learning how to play an instrument maybe. 
Do you want to learn how to compose, create music? Do you want to establish an Instagram brand, get better at how to do it? Do you want to learn how to get viral on TikTok? That's also a skill. So make all the things that come to your mind, uh, record them all. Okay, so you can continue this at home. Uh, let's try to wrap it up in uh, 20 seconds. You can continue these lists at home. Do you want to get better in photography, writing, blogging, vlogging? Okay. The last one. What are the specific visions in your life and career that you would love to see happening? What are the specific visions? in your life and career that you would love to see happening, please be very specific here. The more specific it gets, the better. So you will create a list of wishes, goals, projects, desires, visions. So now that the pandemic is over, I want to travel to at least 30 new countries in the upcoming three years, whatever. So what do you wish to achieve? Or would love to see happening? Create a list of all these wishes, visions. Try to wrap it up in one minute, please.
Okay, and remember your asset creation project, remember your asset creation project, you will do this in the second half in November. Whichever you choose, the 7i project or the entrepreneurial business proposal, please go for it. Like, and do it on the basis of these lists. You know, do this on the basis of all your lists today that you created. Which one will you choose? 7i, more artistic one, that like Kickstarter, or the entrepreneurial one, Shark type, uh, type project? Which one will you choose? Uh, again, do this for your future. Don't think like an uh, like a student here. Do this for your own future. And the best projects are generally the ones that are made for real impact, real life impact. You know, if you really want to establish your medium and get better at it, like you publish not just one article, you publish like ten articles because you want to get better very soon. Like show that hard work. If you are serious about your YouTube channel, you don't create just one video, for example. You start creating right now and create like uh, maybe one or two videos every week and continue that pattern. So do, do establish something and see what happens when you do it consistently. Which animation company has received the highest number of Oscars and you know this, just say it, which one? That's the most famous one, come on. They got the most Oscars. They dominate the Oscars every year. Which company is this? Come on. P, Pixar, who said it first? Yes, you said it there, thank you. Pixar, of course, like Pixar. Every year they get all these Oscars. And New York Times visited them. <laughs> campus just outside of San Francisco to get a rare look at the studio which has dominated the animation category at the Oscars for the last couple of years. This year of course they got Toy Story 3. We're going to talk to some of the filmmakers about what it was like to work on the series that put digital animation on the map. And they don't let too many people in behind the scenes. Designed modeled, built, shot, uh, like any other film, only we do ours virtually. But we, um, we have the actors come, act. Someday, if we're lucky, Andy may have kids of his own. Live action, if you want to film in a grocery store, you go out and find the right location and you film in a grocery store. In our world, we have to design that grocery store. We have to design every last item in the grocery store and build it and create it so that it can be in the movie. <laughs> What we do is my part of the surfing spot. Our job is to try to create a, a cohesive performance. We have his torso, his body, his left arm, his right arm, and these are the small ones. Uh, there's eyebrows, there's mouths, actually. We'll cast animator at, you know, con It's my fault for leaving you guys. From now on, we stick together. Ocean is what we're telling the story. It's so personal to us. 18 years ago, I mean, everybody kind of knew that if Toy Story worked out, it would launch this industry. There would be no Pixar without Buzz and Woody. You know, when I started the company, there was probably 50 people in the company. Um, Another 1,200 people. Now there's at least 1,200 people, yeah. This was the building that A Bug's Life built, and Steve Jobs personally oversaw the design and the construction of it. It seems to me like to be a perfect fusion of and of the Hollywood mindset, but the Silicon Valley mindset as well. Meetings where we you have all that stuff that's how are you getting work done? Um, and we don't need the office talks.
Wow. What? Okay, so you can watch it. Oops, sorry. Big book narrates the story of Pixar. There is a book. Which book narrates the story of Pixar? This is a book called. Have you seen it? <laughs> What's the name of the full name of the book? It's about creativity in business, how to build a creative culture. Any guesses? By the way, it's an amazing book. You should read it. Creativity Inc. is the book. Who wrote this book? Who is the main author? Creativity Inc. Overcoming the unforced unseen forces that stand in the way of true inspiration. He's the co-founder of Pixar. And he has got more than, I think, five Academy Awards. Who is? Yes. You said it, right? That's a good one. Here you are. Thank you. Ed Katmo is the CEO. And this is the book. Yeah, I recommend you read it. It's an amazing book. Which university is the force behind London Fashion Week? Which university is this? Yes. Well done. You said it, right? You, uh, university of Arts London. They have six institutions. They have six institutions and all of them are very active. And the most famous one is made perhaps Central St. Martins. So into this building and it looks amazing. It's some cathedral for the arts. King's Cross in the UK and still. In the teaching staff, but also in the area. It's kind of a great tradition, I think, that British and specifically London art clubs have got. Rather than a of London, you know, it's full of all kinds of experiences in Eat, the way they dance, you know, everything happens in them. It's all about art and design. Okay, this book, which book is this? Seven Da Vinci oh. Principles. What's the name of the book or the author? Any guesses? So these are the seven principles of creativity, borrowing from Leonardo da Vinci, curiosity, demonstration, sensation, sfumato, being comfortable with ambiguity. Okay, which book? How to think like Leonardo da Vinci is the name of the book. Who is the author? Michael Gelb. If you are interested in creativity, again, find this book. Okay, so here is an activity that you can do at home, at home, not right now, but at home. Uh, create a list of all the things that you love and then create a poster out of it. So this was my poster. All the things that I love, that inspire me, that excite me, I put them, like uh, make the list of them. So maybe, Spending more time on these, whatever gives you excitement, passion, love in life, you need to allocate time in your calendar and schedule activities in relation to some of these. Whichever excites your passions, you need to schedule a creative date with yourself and allocate time in your calendar to specifically spend more time on these activities. Okay, I want you to think back and remember your childhood. When you were a child, what did you love doing? I want you to remember that. Imagine yourself playing. Maybe you are three years old, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. You are playing alone or with your friends. What did you love doing most when you were a child? Remember back and create that list. What did you love doing most as a child Make a list of all those things. Why is this so critical? Because when you reconnect with your childhood again and 
reenact some of these activities, you will become so much more happy, creative, and fulfilled and excited about life. Like it'll, you'll connect with your creative spirit, your childhood. This is so critical for your well being. It makes you a less stressful person, it makes you a whole person. Why do I know this? Because I know this from myself. When I uh, was 41, I started connecting with my childhood. I started doodling. This is a doodle, right? Uh, I was always doodling in my notebooks. I had my own logo, but I lost it. This, I created this when I was 13. I created cartoons, comic books, comic magazines. I created immersive theater, but I forgot about all of this because of adulthood, school, school systems, educational systems, work. Like you tend to forget about these things. You tend to forget to play. I want you to go back to your childhood and embrace that play, that sense of, sense of play. How can you embrace that? Think of small actions that you can do again in your life. So go back to your childhood. What did you really love doing? So I loved keeping notebooks. That's why I always doodle every day. I spend some time for doodling because it makes me a happy person. When I do that, I became, become calm, creative, and I connect with myself. So I did all these doodles uh, in the weekend. And these make me happy. These are the doodles I have done. As you can see, like many doodles, I did these in the weekend. So it makes me happy. So how can you make yourself happy? What did you love doing as a child? Make a list. Remember those things. What were these things? How were you playing? And can you do them again? And start them through small steps, not like radical steps, small steps. Maybe half an hour every day or 20 minutes. Or if you don't have time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That's all you need. Did you do any sports? Arts. Dancing. Painting, drawing, doodling. What? What did you do? So I want you to embrace that again. And remember, if you want to be original, originality is all about producing hundreds, not even hundreds, thousands of ideas. So you need to act as an idea generation machine. You should give your brain a lot of puzzles. And you need to create tens of ideas every day. Try to create 10 ideas every day, 15 ideas, 20 ideas. Write them in your diary every day. Make it a habit of yours. Because originality comes from thousands of bad ideas, like hundreds of bad ideas. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. And then you make hundreds of them, make mistakes, keep learning, keep iterating, make them more specific. As you iterate them, these ideas grow. You connect them with one another. When you connect ideas together, you get to bigger ideas and you pilot them. You turn them into prototypes. You turn them into articles. You turn them into videos, artwork. And then these are like, you are a farmer. You are, these are crops. 
these are all different crops. You have to have lots of diverse crops and let them grow. Which ones will get bigger? Just grow them. So which ones will be promising prototypes? So keep growing them. And originality comes from that. You know, creating a lot of ideas, giving your brain a lot of puzzles, and trying to build linkages among these ideas. That's how you get creative. <coughs> okay, here is the uh, challenge. You need to turn five pounds to 5,000. How do you do that? You have five pounds, that's your capital. With five pounds, can you create 5,000 pounds of value? With five pounds or less. You don't even need five pounds. You, you can have zero pounds, but you can still generate 5,000 pounds. How can you do that? This is a puzzle. Please create some ideas. Again, this is a challenging puzzle, yes? But your brain loves puzzles. The more you solve puzzles, the more rigorous, creative you become. Like how do you solve this puzzle? Can you do that? It's like magic from five to 5,000. It requires quite a bit of magic, but many people do it. Any ideas? If you would like to share, by the way, with the class, uh, you can share your ideas with the class as well so that we can learn from you. Just capture your ideas. Again, the more ideas, the better, right? You need to come up with 10, 15 ideas. You, you can continue doing this at home. It's such a virtual activity. But remember, you need to really believe in the possibility of this. Like if you don't believe in the possibility, let's say you are trying to generate ideas and then your brain will stop you. Your brain will say that this is not, you can't do that. Whenever you say that and you listen to your inner block and brain, you stop there. You stop exploring that possibility. This is possible. Like you need to change your perspective around it. You need to change your mindset around it. And everything in this life is about your mindset. Mindset is everything. Like this applies to any aspect of your life. You can generate excuses, hundreds of excuses in any aspect of your life. But excuses don't solve anything. If you really want to make a difference, you need to solve problems. You need to get it done and generate something new, exciting, fresh, add value, create value from scratch. And this requires a lot of creativity, imagination, but also hard work. So here is an example. This man made more than 200,000 just by drawing cat cartoons. Which website is this? He is creating cat cartoons. He was on Shark Tank. Do you know this website? He's just creating these cat cartoons and selling them, each one for $10. And he got like more than 20,000 orders. And he's an entrepreneur, he's an artist, and he's a one man person, one man company. Which website is this? And you can see all these cat drawings online. Who is he? Or who is this? Which website is this? I want to draw a cat for you. Dot com. Okay. I, I want to draw a cat for you. And he was on Shark Tank.
So, and you can watch it if you Google it. I want to draw a cat for you. Uh, so what will be your enterprise idea? You don't have any capital, okay? And this was my idea. I wanted to go back to my childhood and I love doodling. I need a pencil and a notebook. And this is 50p. This is four and a half. In total, they are five, five pounds. The total value, this is my capital, five pounds. A notebook, a pencil, and my imagination. So I started doodling and filled this like a notebook full of doodles. And this was my brand, self-making, self-making studio. That's the brand, that's the company. It is about doodling, creativity, notebooks, careers, employability. So I want to design exercises, I said. So this is the mindset. If you want to make one million a year, you have to use your mathematics to do that. You need to help so many people that your work should generate about 2017 every day. Okay, so if you divide by days, this is the total amount you need to make one day. What if every person gave you one dollar? Let's say you made an ebook which has gone viral. You need to help 2,700 people and you need to go viral. What if they gave you two, two dollars? Then you need to uh, ex have sell to 1,400 people, right? If, you, if they gave you 10 dollars, then you need just 270 people a day, etc. So use your mathematics. And how can you help people? How can you reach people and add value and enormous value to their lives? That's how you really need to think. You know, break it into parts, little parts. Everything is doable if you break it into parts and do it through small steps. And doodling. I already doodle every day. If I doodle every day in one page, in one year, I have 365 doodles already. And that means a book. So I turned it into a book automatically. It's like automatic process. Okay. So please read this article. If you want to become a multi-millionaire, do these 15 things immediately. Read this article. It's in your links. So yeah, I was talking about this capital, right? This is five pounds. And then I applied to UEA, Enterprise Fund, for staff members. And I got it. And that Enterprise Fund was 5,000. So I turned this five pounds through 5,000 through the Enterprise Fund. And then I established my book. Yeah, so it is doable. You can turn five pounds into 5,000 if you have a good entrepreneurial idea and go for it. In which country? rice farmers have started to make a living through blockchain online games. Axie Infinity, they are all, these rice farmers are all playing blockchain online game, Axie Infinity. And the money they get through these tokens is much more than they make in the rice fields. And that's the new economy, by the way. That will, that's, that will be our reality very soon everywhere, I think. You will make more money online than in your own job. That's the reality that we are going through. Like these TikToker, TikTok professions, like TikTokers, they are making much more money than TikTok tokens, uh, than their own jobs. So welcome to the token economy. So this is the token economy. Which country is this? It was on the news. Philippines. So this happened in Philippines. Uh, and that's the new reality, really. Islo, he says, I made over 5,000 just selling through, uh, through selling digital products. He sells templates. He's just 19. 
and he made 5,000 just this month, he says, just this month. So it is doable. Many people do these things. Look at this 12-year-old coder. He is 12 years old, and he sold NFTs for, uh, and he made more than 400,000. Right now, after some time, he made more than 5 million. He's, a, he's 12 years old, come on, and he can do it. Like, he learned how to do it. Yeah. So you can do these things as long as you're passionate, excited, curious. So you need to think like an entrepreneur. Who wrote this book, Entrepreneur Revolution? Daniel Priestley, by the way, it's one of the best books on entrepreneurship. If you haven't read it, make sure you read it. Entrepreneur Revolution. And these are some of the ideas. You need to make three calls. Save at least 10% of your income. Stop spending time with negative people. Carry $1,000 on you at all times. Why? Because you want to think with abundance, he says. Don't have lunch alone. Always have lunch to network with people. And these are the top three books that I learned about entrepreneurship. Again, make sure you read this article that I have written for you. Okay? Which American TV program has entrepreneurs pitching to investors? We're finishing. Which one is this? One of you said it. What was it? Shark Tank. Yeah. Uh, make sure you watch Shark Tank because it will tell you how to become an entrepreneur. Like becoming an entrepreneur. Like, and they have really fun episodes. Uh, make sure you watch it. Local thrift store. Tip seals recreates. So this is. Christmas sweaters, you can watch all these, okay? Uh, they are in your slides. Uh, I'll stop here. The drip drop, I'll, I'll finish with this one actually. The drip drop. And the last one, there's even a company that mails potatoes. Watch it, make sure you watch this one. Potato parts, they write messages on potatoes and mail them. You can see they made uh, $500,000 doing this. It's amazing. So you can make money from anything and everything. So think abundance. You can be an entrepreneur, kickstart your own business. Just think positively, create fun. Okay, thank you. Have a great week. I'll see you in the seminars. By the way, I forgot this. If you want to scan, you can scan it. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Handbook. You'll see all the details there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.